Now, just one more thing we're going to add in here is we're just going to say if active network dot active network config dot price feed does not equal address zero. This this is a way to get the zero address or the default value return active network config. And the reason I'm going to put this in here is if we call get anvil eth config without this, we actually will create a new price feed. However, if we've already deployed one, we don't want to deploy a new one. So we do this. This active network config dot price feed does not equal zero is basically saying, hey, have we set the price feed up as something? Remember, because address defaults to address zero. So if it's not address zero, it means we've already set it. So just go ahead and return and don't run the rest of this. And with that being said, the name of this function, I'd argue, is not very good because it's not just getting the Anvil ETH config, it's actually creating the contracts in here. So I would change this to get or create Anvil ETH config and copy this and paste it up here. Again, like I said, I love being very verbose with my functions to make my code much more readable. But okay, so now that we have this, remember before, every time we ran forge test, it failed, right? And why did it fail? Well, if we go back to the test. When we call test price feed version is accurate, every time we called get version, this would fail because the contract didn't exist on Anvil. Now that we have our helper config here, we do indeed deploy our own fake price feed. And if we go to the fake price feed, is there a get version? There is indeed a version function which returns zero and let's actually update this to four so that it actually will pass because right now if it's zero, it'll fail. So version is four. So now it should be able to call this version parameter because it's a public and return four. So let's go ahead, moment of truth. So if we do forge test dash dash fork URL, it's a poly uh, RPC URL. We know that this is gonna pass because it's going to fork the Sepolia chain and our helper config is gonna give it the Sepolia address. We know that if we go to our Alchemy dashboard, go to our Sepolia, we little, do a little refresh here, we're gonna see, just now, we see, we see a whole bunch of calls coming in, and we do indeed see this passes. Now, Foundry was failing whenever we ran this without a fork. Now let's do a little clear. Now if I do forge test without a network, without an RPC URL, let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. And see, this was also so much faster because we didn't have to make any API calls up to Alchemy. We didn't have to say, hey, Alchemy, what's the Sepolia chain look like? And wait for it to tell us what the Sepolia chain looks like. We were able to do everything locally on our own computer here. It was much faster. We didn't have to make it any API calls. And boom, we've got this network agnostic setup so that we can deploy our Fundme contract on any network that we want. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And I know I keep saying this, but I'm being incredibly honest when I say, learning these skills right here is making you all better than the current status quo of Solidity Developer out there. I'm giving you the skills to leave this course and not just be a good smart contract developer, but I'm giving you the skills to raise the entire bar of smart contract developing. So. Congratulations for getting this far. And I know we've gone over a lot of stuff and we're not done with this project. We have a lot more to go, but this is a great time to take a break because you have just accomplished a, a massive amount and learned a ton. If any of this is confusing, remember to use the course resources to your advantage. We have artificial intelligence that can help answer some of these questions. We have the discussions forum as well with a ton of people taking this course with you who can help you out. And remember, you can come in here and you can help other people out as well. So take a quick break. Here's a cute picture of a frog. Here's an even cuter picture of a frog as a reward. And I'll see you soon.